Hi folks, welcome to another video from a plain truth .info. Uh Today is a very important document uh, we're bringing out here. Uh, a lot of people have seen this, but most people have not. This is from Deborah Tavara. She's been an activist in the Santa Rosa, Sebastopol, Sonoma County area for years. She has a website <clears throat> called StopTheCrime.net um, as well as a YouTube channel. But uh, we haven't heard from uh, Ms. Tavares now in several years. This was posted back in, I believe, March of 2015. Um, and the person that posted this video here was asking what happened to Deborah Tavares. Uh, never lose truth. <clears throat> and that's a good question because nobody seems to know where she is or heard of her after challenging PG&E. And these document releases you'll see coming up here are very critical to the whole events that are occurring now in Santa Rosa. <clears throat> we had appointed the head of the Rebuild Santa Rosa very quickly and a man named Darius Anderson we'll get in tomorrow who's a Democratic lobbyist. He runs the Sonoma Media Group. You'll notice yesterday in the video we talked about Sonoma Design Group with all the military connections. Well, this is Sonoma Media Group. Darius Anderson runs it, owns the Press Democrats, several other newspapers they bought up, controlling the narrative, uh, taking in all the money, just like disaster capitalism. We'll see if they're using it for goodwill. But they got Rebuild Santa Rosa coming up with uh, all the players coming in for the Agenda 21, which we'll document next. But today is a very important document, the plan to burn up Northern California and more bad news. This is my Deborah, Deborah Tavares interview with Jeff Rents back in 2015, saying that this exact event that just occurred in, in Sonoma, Napa, Mendocino counties, all some 16 major fires are saying all started at once, all started in the middle of the night, all started without a storm, all started with heavy winds whipping them up, all to a person, firemen saying they've never seen it. And now over two and a half, almost two and a half weeks in, no one has an explanation for what happened except Miss Tavares. She called it. Let's get into it. Uh, this is part one. Thanks. Deborah Tavares is joining us tonight. She has, as usual, a uh, trunk full of data that she's picked up along with Lou. I don't know how they do it, but they're on the road traveling, going to conferences, listening, recording, uh, doing amazing things to get information together to present on her website, one of them, StopTheCrime.net, and on her program heard here uh, before this program each night, Monday through Friday. Right. Uh, needless to say, time went on. Of course, uh, the entire push against smart meters uh, got out of California, fortunately, and other states have been uh, fighting it as well. What we did discover is that the entire opt-out was all part of a psychological maneuver to throw the activists against the smart meters off course and for those that were outspoken to believe that they were being listened to. And the opt-outs were and always were only an appeasement plan to um, give people the illusion that the utilities worked for them and that the CPUC worked for us as well. Right. We actually found a document out of the sociology department out of Vanderbilt University that we have on the home page of StopTheCrime.net that talks about how they would socially engineer the utility companies in accepting the smart grid. So having that been said, um, again, this is around uh, now uh, August of 2011. PG&E has since come under fire on many issues and certainly the fact that uh, they've been in collusion with the California Public Utility Commission. So what happened in order to create the illusion that the California Public Utility Commission actually regulated the utilities, which they don't, it's all Rothschild, they slapped PG in on the, on the hand and required a document release. Well, there was a large document release, as I recall, uh, about seven or so months ago, and different members in this uh, group, uh, this uh, EMF safety network group that I'm a part of, were going through these documents that were released by PG&E. And I'm going to read to the audience uh, a document released, and it is extremely disturbing, with that background in mind of what I said about okay. everything starting here 
Sure. Literally in Sebastopol, California. Again, in That's, w- wonder why they picked Sebastopol. That was, again, ground zero for the anti-smart meter movement. Uh, that was really day one. Of the, uh, okay, but that's a good thing. Now, are they coming back and trying to punish Sebastopol? Well, I'm going to read these emails, and the, you and the listeners can make out of this what you would like, and here we go. First, I'm going to just say that these emails were dated in August of 2011. There are only two emails. Uh, one is from the California Public Utility, Utility Commission going to uh, PG&E. The gas and electric. And again, you can type in PG&E followed by Rothschild, and you will see that PG&E is Rothschild. It's hard to believe. It's amazing. They're just in everything. Yes, they are. So here's what's important to understand about these two emails. First of all, there were a total of six people involved in the email, not just the two people that were communicating back and forth, but the four people that were copied in the email exchange. Right. And the people that were copied, here's uh, an idea of who these people were. First of all, the subject of the email exchange was space weather risk. And uh, the executive director of the CPUC was copied, uh, the vice president of regulatory affairs, the CPUC attorney, and the interim director at the CPUC. And then, of course, the two people that corresponded directly and copied those four people. Here's the first email, again, dated August 2011. This is from the CPUC to PG&E. I assume you're assembling a high-level task force of washed up and never were, yet somehow movie star handsome, former astronaut, to handle PG&E's response to the upcoming damaging space weather. Also, Mm. Mm. please dribble out one at a time over the next few months all internal memos, lawsuits, PowerPoint presentations, and um, officer cover-up directives in which PG&E is repeatedly warned about damaging space weather and chooses to do nothing, then has its lawyers blame its customers, a.k.a. Earthling, for an ad, for an adverse consequences resulting. Now, keep in mind, PG&E is involved in weather modification. In fact, um, I was personally on the 16th floor of the PG&E buildings in San Francisco mm-hmm. uh, where they monitor the weather, and they have pulled permits uh, to uh, inject cloud seeding and, of course, more here in Northern California. Here's the second email now in response to that email I just wrote that was from the CPUC to PG&E. Now, this is only within about 10 minutes. Can you and talk a bit louder, Deborah? I think we're getting a yes. little low. There we go. Now okay. We're yeah, this yeah. is only about a 10-minute delay before there's an answer back uh-huh. um, from the CPUC email from mm-hmm. Uh, PG&E. This is Mm -hmm. now from PG&E. Just a reminder, we are the first to propose a solar generator in space that will beam RF waves down to a receptor site and convert it to DC current. We have changed our receptor site from the Mojave Desert to Sebastopol, California. Now, this is a very alarming. I sent this email exchange to uh, some higher-ups, and I received some responses to this email and what they believe is meant. And uh, this is the first comment response to this email exchange. Um, I consulted with a top expert, a man who was a high official in an American electronics company, with a classified job and deep knowledge about these matters, I have been able to come up with the following. This system is set of orbital sun collectors, which will concentrate sunlight and convert it to microwaves and send it down to a station to generate power. It, however, could be used by aiming, uh, by aiming to any target below within a certain radius 
to completely destroy all human life slowly in a large city. Very dangerous, Mm -hmm. unneeded means Mm -hmm. of generating power now that we have so many free energy means available. Obviously, most energy providers are associated with and under the control of the um, U.S. government and Intel. Here's the second comment to this email exchange. I agree with your assessment. This email exchange dated 211 is indeed very disturbing. I submit it is merely a wisp of the smoke from a recently fired gun, the visible tip of a very dangerous iceberg. I strongly suggest you immediately file a series of Freedom of Information Act requests targeting both the CPUC and PG&E in order to hopefully get a fuller picture of this complete iceberg and what has transpired concerning this to date. Okay. You, as a California resident, have every right to know what your public utilities are doing with your rate dollars. As you know, beamed microwave radio frequencies from space are the patented techniques for manipulating the Earth's jet streams in order to turn selectively modified weather patterns worldwide. Climate change is genuine. However, I submit it is simply not the result of excessive human carbon emissions footprints as infamously claimed. The potential to generate electricity from beam RF waves is certainly a possibility with the existing technology, but I submit it is not the primary goal. I submit the necessary outer space RF generators are already in place and have been functional for at least a decade and a half. This is very, this is a very interesting trail of damning breadcrumbs that needs to be followed up, in my opinion. Then I have another comment, and this is interesting. The attached emails claiming the beam RF waves to Sevastopol is obviously a joke shared among PG&E and PUC staff. The technology for this has not even been developed, financed, or It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And here's a comment back to that. Sadly, the tech has long since been used. Space-based weapons in conjunction with the wireless networks, along with frequencies used Mm -hmm. to first crowds, etc., are old technologies. Most people are unaware just how advanced tech has become. Mm -hmm. Six people were involved in these emails, PG&E and CPUC, and the tech is real. So joke or not, when someone yells fire, we must investigate, don't you think? And then there's attachments uh, showing the involvement of PG&E with weather weapons, uh, which they are heavily engaged. As you know, Rothschild owns Weather Central. And also the uh, uh, involvement of Rothschild and PG&E. So what we had was an obvious targeting uh, to uh, incapacitate the initial group against uh, the smart meters, because certainly... When we read the documents about the successes of uh, smart, the sm- deployment of the smart grid worldwide, California is mentioned repeatedly as being the troublemaking state for the refusal of smart meters initially. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I just want everyone that is listening to understand the degree and the types of weapons, because, Jeff, you certainly experienced uh, the likelihood of weapons while you were in your vehicle, and they use these weapons on cities and crowd disbursement, and they can increase anger. They can cause all kinds of uh, physical um, problems that people normally would not. Physical, absolutely physical, and emotional problems as well. We have to keep in mind that we are electrical beings, and there's a frequency for damn near everything. So if they blast you with it, you're going to get that kind of a a response. That's exactly right. if it's go-to-sleep time... Uh, we just take a half second, and your your car is out of control. And I'm not saying that's what happened. I don't know. I don't like to be dramatic about things, but it's certainly a possibility. ...task of trying to find and identify those who couldn't escape their burning homes. Searchers in some areas are being helped by cadaver dogs. 
Authorities say some remains are so beyond recognition they will use serial numbers on medical implants. Like I tell you all the time, they are using quantum computers. So their problem, reaction, and solution, back when I was a kid, it was problem, reaction, solution. One problem, one reaction, one solution. Now it's one problem, several reactions, and endless solutions. So now they're saying that some of the people couldn't even be found in these fires that popped up out of nowhere at one o'clock in the morning and showed up in a blue flash in the middle of the night. We couldn't have found these people if they didn't have implants or RFID chips inside them to help us locate them. That's one thing. Serial numbers on medical implants, like hip replacements to ID victims. Some of them are merely ashes and bones, and, and we may never get truly confirmative identification on ashes. So you cremated, you can't get ID. They'll fire all right, so let's fact check as they say. What heat Fahrenheit does human bone disintegrate? Uh, sad report, 1500 degrees centigrade. You will need to make bone literally evaporate. Centigrade to Fahrenheit, 2732 degrees, further confirming the heat at the time of the torching. This kid's playing outside, folks. This is really hard to do sometimes. Always hard to do, but this is really hard. We're here in Santa Rosa. So that's all I've got for part one here on Deborah Tavares' interview showing uh, premeditation, uh, possible prima facie evidence of premeditation for these events that occurred beginning on October 9th. And I uh, just want to bring your attention. We'll get into the Agenda 21 stuff. FEMA Director DeWitt to lead organization to rebuild North Bay. They're starting Agenda 21, folks. We're going to document it. Former FEMA executive, Washington firm, responds. Um, contractors to build tiny homes. Um, we're also having uh, here this article down here. These articles, Zillow rents jump 36%. Tight housing market to get tighter. But look at this document we're we'll talking about. Santa Rosa considers raising density caps on new housing projects October 7th, two days before the event. So we'll get into that as well, folks. And here's an article, a rebuilding coffee park where they're, they're uh, putting in the news, which is owned by these same guys, <clears throat> about rebuilding and stacking packums and walking and whatnot. So we'll get into that in the next one. This stuff is happening, happening fast. This has been planned. This was a de designated target event. This is another 9-11, folks. We're going to get this smoking tree, smoking guns, and smoking Agenda 21s, uh, getting it out there shortly. So anyway, that's it for now. Uh, please uh, speak the truth. Get it out here. Time is short. We need to organize. We need to stop these people from doing this. We need to have our own plans. And you all need to find your own sense of, uh, of, of self-reliability, self-sufficiency, your own water, your own food, your own sources of energy, your own abilities to um, know where your water comes from and uh, also get to know your neighbors. We have to build community. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. Plain Truth out. So that's all I've got for part one here on Deborah Tavares' interview showing uh, premeditation, uh, possible prima facie evidence of premeditation for these events that occurred beginning on October 9th. And I uh, just want to bring your attention. We'll get into the Agenda 21 stuff. FEMA Director DeWitt to lead organization to rebuild North Bay. They're starting Agenda 21, folks. We're going to document it. Former FEMA executive, Washington firm, responds. Um contractors to build tiny homes um we're also having uh, here this article down here these articles zillow rents jump 36 percent tight housing market to get tighter but look at this document we're we'll talking about santa rosa considers raising density caps on new housing projects october 7th two days before the event so we'll get into that as well folks and here's an article a rebuilding coffee park where they're they're uh, putting in the news, which is owned by these same guys, <clears throat> about rebuilding and stacking packums and walking and whatnot. So we'll get into that in the next one. This stuff is happening, happening fast. This has been planned. This was a de designated target event. This is another 9-11, folks. We're going to get this smoking tree, smoking guns, and smoking Agenda 21s, uh, getting it out there shortly. So anyway, that's it for now. Uh, please uh, 
speak the truth, get it out here. Time is short. We need to organize. We need to stop these people from doing this. We need to have our own plans. And you all need to find your own sense of, uh, of, of self-reliability, self-sufficiency, your own water, your own food, your own sources of energy, your own abilities to um, know where your water comes from and uh, also get to know your neighbors. We have to build community. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you on the next one. Plain Truth out.